go. Hello, everyone. You should um, be tuning in today to the website chat. Sorry, this is Joe Flick. I'm getting a little uh, rough start there, but this Thank is the website today. chat for um, for November, and we just have a few things to get started. Uh, just a reminder that these website chats are recorded, and you can catch the most recent ones. I usually keep two or three up if there's relevant information in a showcase on our Vimeo channel. You can always email me at the State Library for that link. And um, I've recently started putting those links in the Aspen eCalendar. Um, on the event, so that makes it easier for you to find. So you can just go to the Aspen event calendar to the date you would like to review, and you'll see the link um, for the meeting is replaced by a link to the recording. So hopefully that's um, helpful. You do get credit for these, and if you attend live, you can also um, send me an email and I'll be happy to write you an OPI credit certificate for attending because they're all very informative and it's good training. Speaking of training, just a couple things. We do have our virtual fall workshops coming up next week. That's um, the Tuesday and Wednesday next week. These are longer sessions that are intended to be, a, be a, it, their, their intent is for you to attend them live. Um, there's time built in for um, breakout sessions and reflection and so we hope you will at least consider attending one. There, a longer session can be a little daunting but we have encouraged all of our facilitators to make sure you get plenty of good breaks so I hope you'll do those. We've got a really terrific lineup of presenters from all over the country that will be um, focusing their attention just on our Montana librarians. These are all pretty small classes expecting between 20 and 30 people in each in each class and we've just added a reception time 4 30 on the on Tuesday the 17th so even if you can't attend the training but just want to get together with your fellow librarians there's no agenda planned at the reception just tune in at 4 30 the link is in Aspen it'll be a zoom meeting so just come um, and hopefully get your, put your camera on, your microphone, we'll just have a chat, see how everybody's doing. A couple other things coming up in December, uh, the Montana Historical Society is going to be, I'm going to be facilitating a workshop with them. They're going to give you an update on all of the brands that they have now digitized and available for you to research and show you how to navigate through that collection, which I think will be really interesting. And I, I I'm not, Sure, because I but I think that session might actually make an, a neat public program too. So maybe the recording might be something you'll want to put on your website or promote through social media to your patrons because that's a really um, popular topic. We'll also be doing the last of the Aspen's basics course that we started several months ago in December, and then we'll restart that course in January or February. So come in come you can attend any and all of those sessions and they're all recorded or at least sections of them are recorded so and then Amelia has a read squared uh, kind of an overview planned for the third third of December okay so with that Jenny I'm going to turn things over to you fantastic Colleen asked if I could get closer to my mic so I wanted to make sure do a quick mic check make sure folks could hear me okay I sound all right? It sounds good to me, but how about everybody else? I'll check the chat. Yes, hearing, hearing, seeing lots, seeing yeses. Great. Thanks, everybody. So I want to cover a couple of topics today. One, an update on our public library standards process. And Tracy's with us. Tracy's been leading the effort and really helping to draft the standards with input from our public library standards course and I think most of you know but just to sort of recap where we are a year ago we were in the process of drafting new public library standards so standards that are in administrative rules of Montana that libraries meet in order to qualify for state funding and we were in the middle of a public comment period after the Commission had originally approved the first draft of those standards last February when the pandemic hit. Uh, we did 
have a number of online meetings and opportunities for people to share feedback about those standards. Uh, but when we met with the task force last May, we all sort of felt like we were in the midst of this pandemic. We weren't really sure that we had enough perspective at the time to evaluate what was happening in our libraries in order to make sure that these experiences would shape and inform how we crafted those new public library standards. So with the approval of the commission, we put that process on hold for the summer. We did pick that process back up again in September with a meeting of the task force and um, really considered the feedback that we had heard in the spring, uh, a lot of concerns from librarians about um, some of the standards that required paid staff to be in libraries 100% of the time that libraries were open, uh, draft requirements with regard to trustee certification, and, and some of those kinds of concerns. And so we took those concerns back to the task force. Um, in conversations with the task force, we also thought about how we might make sure that the standards would better reflect the needs for libraries to um, be more flexible in how to address challenges like the pandemic, like making sure that we had uh, resources available to provide digital services, online services when necessary. One of the really interesting constructive things that came out of those conversations was a strong desire to see reflected in the standards more opportunities for collaborative work. Another key uh, need for or hope for the standards is that in addition to serving as sort of a, a checkbox that libraries use to ensure that they're, they're providing a basic level of service and, and qualify for state aid, staff have a really strong desire to use the standards as a tool to help libraries see opportunities for advancement to see opportunities to continue to develop your library services and for our staff to have a, a way to encourage that kind of library development. Um, so they're, they're not just nagging you about completing the certification process, that they can actually sit down with you and use the, the tools available to help think about where you might want to take library services in and I'm, I'm really excited about where we're going with that process. Joe's included a link to the task force information. Um, Joe, I don't know if it's possible to make me a presenter really quick. I thought I might share my screen if I could. Sure, I can do that. You should see the share screen button enabled now. Right. So what I hope you're seeing is yep, a seeing the spreadsheet roadmap. Yep. And um, I don't what I want to say about this roadmap is that this is very preliminary. It's very, very much a draft. I don't want you to pay attention to the details necessarily. Um, what I want to convey to you is what this roadmap could mean for library services. Um, so what you'll see some language that you're familiar with, um, essential standards, excellent standards, and then a cooperative standard where we see opportunities for libraries to think about how we collaborate together to continue to advance and develop our library services. What is finally encapsulated in the essential standards only is what would then become part of that administrative rule and what libraries would have to certify that they need in order to qualify for state aid. These excellent services and the cooperative services will continue to be part of a roadmap for thinking about advancing library services, but not necessarily a part of the administrative rules and what libraries would 
would certify. And in that way, we can continue to make those excellent and cooperative services much more dynamic. It's the, those are opportunities that we can continue to uh, update and change and enhance over time much more readily than going through an administrative rules process as we would have to do as we update those, those kinds of essential standards. So again, I don't need to focus on the content necessarily, but I'm, I'm excited about this idea of having a road back, roadmap where our consultants working with you, working with your library boards, um, have some ideas and suggestions and opportunities to continue to think about how we're enhancing those kinds of services. Um, what will go to the commission in December is something that looks a little bit like this, as well as those essential standards, draft essential standards for the commission to consider. And then um, we'll again ask the commission to approve a set of draft standards and we'll begin the public comment process all over again. And uh, again, as was the case when we first launched this process, we're planning for two public comment periods. One um, for the commission to just receive your feedback about the initial draft standards or moving that standards into the administrative rules process, opening up that administrative rules process, which necessitates another round of public comment before final adoption. I think where we're at in the timeline is essentially moving the timeline back an entire year. So we were thinking that we would have libraries certify the new standards in about um, 2022, and we'd be looking to have the, the first certification of the new standards in 2023. Tracy, do I have that right? Yes, that is correct. Tracy, is there anything else you wanted to add about the, the process that we're going through at this point? You know, the only thing I would let people on this call know is uh, the task force is reviewing the draft documents I sent them from their meeting on Tuesday. And so I will update the Public Library Standards Task Force uh, website early next week. I just wanted to give them time to make sure I had captured everything they wanted and then I'll place the most current drafts on the website next week. So like I said, I don't want you to think about the content yet, but we're, I think we're excited about what this process could mean for us going forward. Um, as Tracy said, the new draft documents will be posted to the task force website next week. And then I think they'll be shared with the commission at the commission's December meeting. That meeting is scheduled for December 9th. And so we'll plan to post those meeting materials probably right before Thanksgiving that week or Thanksgiving, so those documents will be shared with the commission through the commission materials page uh, around that time as well. So, questions or comments about where we are with the public library standards process? And there's nothing in the chat, but maybe give people just a, another minute to think about that. Not seeing anything, Jenny. Good. So the other topic I wanted to share with all of you pertains to a, a really meaty conversation that we had with the Network Advisory Council yesterday at their regular November council meeting. Going way back in our, our state library archives and memory banks, some of you might recall that we used to refer to some of our services as the Montana Library Network. And sort of included in that network of services were concepts like the Montana Shared Catalog, um, ebook platforms that grew into Montana Library to Go. Um, Bruce reminded us yesterday that 
we actually talked about something called the Montaniana, which thankfully morphed into the Montana Memory Project. Uh, we had a number of different kinds of pilots, uh, like a pilot with OCLC for home delivery. Um, so there was a lot of these different kinds of efforts, uh, and some of them grew out of one another. For example, libraries that were interested in ebooks sort of grew out of libraries that were members of the shared catalog, but then grew to expand beyond shared catalog libraries. Um, the Montana Memory Project contributors to libraries, museums, and archives, and a wide variety of, of users as well. So who is using these services and how they're being used? So, so Jenny, this is Joe. I'm just going to interrupt you and ask you to lean a little closer to oh, your microphone. Sure. You are kind of going, uh, just volumes just dropped a little yeah. bit. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. Um, so as these different kinds of services were developing, the, the language around the, the Montana Library Network sort of fell out of fashion. And somebody asked me yesterday why that was. And I'm not entirely sure, except that I think it has to do a little bit with us thinking about the Montana Library Network as a who or an organization or a group of libraries rather than really what it is. And we had the Montana Shared Catalog Consortium, we had the Montana Library to Go um, libraries and, and so forth. So there was a lot of who's already and, and we weren't really sure where the Montana Library Network fit in those other kinds of groups. And so the, the use of that language and marketing and, and, and sort of thinking behind the Montana Library Network sort of fell out of fashion. Uh, but of late, we've found that perhaps it's something that we need to give more thought to. Uh, staff here at the State Library have been talking about it, and we wanted to have some initial conversations yesterday with our Network Advisory Council, as well as leaders of some of the other advisory groups and boards that help support and administer some of the programs I just talked about. So we had representatives from the Montana Shared Catalog, from Montana Library to Go, from our, our partners resource sharing group and so forth, um, helping us just begin a conversation about, is it time again to start thinking about the concept of the Montana Library Network. Um, stepping back just a little bit to share with you some of my thoughts about why I think it's time, and then we can maybe talk a little bit about you know, what Montana Library Network might be. Um, as I said, we had these different kinds of services grow up out of needs in our libraries, needs that reflected the needs of our users, like the shared catalog and like Montana Library to Go. As they grew up, they sort of grew up in silos. They have their own platforms, they have their own technology, they have their own workflow support. In some cases, they have their own cost share formulas. Um, there's not necessarily a lot of overlap in their administration or planning. Where the overlap is, in the, is that it involves many of the same libraries and, and many of you. Um, that siloed approach has meant that we haven't always been very careful or deliberate in our planning for how we continue to advance those kinds of services. Uh, and to give you a concrete example, you're all familiar with Montana Library to Go and the contract that we have with OverDrive. Um, there are other efforts to explore what's called the Digital Public Library of America, which is a, a separate ebook uh, resource app um, content development process. And then at the same time, the shared catalog was also interested in exploring some ebook solutions. And we found that um, we at the State Library weren't communicating very effectively about how these opportunities might better dovetail with one another to support uh, ebooks and, and e resources. Um, we know that a lot of libraries are procuring 
key resources like databases, like LinkedIn Learning, uh, Hulu, other, other, um, other kinds of e-resources, largely on their own because, this, because State Library lost funding for those services and really hasn't played a role in helping libraries to procure those services of late. So we know that we're not leveraging those resources as we might if we were doing that kind of work collaboratively. There is some need for very specific um, administrative processes for some of our specific services, like making sure that libraries know how to build ebook collections. Um, but there's a lot of crossover in the kinds of services that we offer. Uh, and I'm often asked questions from the State Library Commission, like, how is the pandemic impacting library services? Uh, and, and that impact um, may be specific to what it means for users using the shared catalog. It certainly had implications for uh, how we've approached things like the Montana Library to Go usage and approached summer reading over the summer. Um, there's an opportunity for us to think both specifically about those services as well as those kinds of, of impacts across our services. Um, those are just a, a handful of examples of what has sort of started to prompt us thinking about how we might more deliberately think about our services overall rather than in those kinds of silos. Uh, and so we, we started having a conversation, as I said yesterday, with the NAC about is, is that what we mean by the Montana Library Network and what might that look like? And I've really been turning these, these ideas over in my head a lot and talking with um, our staff, with um, other librarians. I look forward to having a conversation with the commission at their December commission meeting. What I said yesterday is I really think that the Montana Library Network is not necessarily an organization. I definitely don't think it is made up of member libraries. I see all Montana libraries as the Montana Library Network. The word that's kind of turning over in my mind right now is commitment that it's a, a commitment amongst Montana libraries to collaborate with one another, to really recognize and understand our individual users' needs and the needs in our community, um, to address those needs as necessary through our libraries, um, but to the extent possible and to the extent that it makes sense through collaboration with one another. And how that collaboration really manifests itself is um, in our engagement with one another and in thinking about sort of a core set of services that um, where it makes sense, we can collaborate to deliver most effectively. You've heard us talk about the ideas of infrastructure, innovation, and engagement where the State Library in partnership with all of you is working hard to build a kind of scalable infrastructure to support services. We hope that those services, that infrastructure is innovative and that by providing those kinds of, of foundational services to all of you, that that then frees up you to focus your time and resources on your local communities. I think we can think of a core set of services as that foundational infrastructure. And with input from the Network Advisory Council and all of you, uh, we can really define what those core services are and should be. Uh, and I, I wanna emphasize that we're not necessarily talking about anything new or, or really revolutionary. We're talking about a shared library management system like a shared catalog. We're talking about shared e-resources and shared e-book platforms like what exists with Montana Library to Go. We're talking about a shared platform 
for our cultural heritage materials like exists through the Montana Memory Project. Um, I hope that we can do a lot more to leverage resources to support our e-resource needs. Um, as I said, I think if this, is, this conversation is more about committing to um, ourselves that we want to try to leverage our approach to thinking about this kind of infrastructure um, in a really collaborative way and that we shape the Network Advisory Council to help us really think for and, and plan for uh, how we're delivering those services. And part of that planning is helping us think about what success looks like for uh, the services that we're delivering for our collaborative engagement with one another. Um, success is really based on the success of our users. You're familiar with our Fair Library Access Resolution, which says that all Montanans have access to information sufficient and to our needs. I think that we can think about what kinds of outcomes demonstrate whether or not we are successfully achieving that resolution. And that with help from the Network Advisory Council, we can continue to evaluate what kinds of services are necessary for us to help achieve that vision and how we measure our success towards achieving that goal. We also talked at the Network Advisory Council yesterday about really engaging subject matter experts, almost as subcommittees of the Network Advisory Council who bring deep expertise in some of the more administrative kinds of questions, policy questions, um, planning questions that pertain to those individual services and that we might engage these subcommittees to help us think about what success looks like for those individual services themselves and help us think about what kinds of um, changes are occurring with our users, how their, the needs of users might change, how we approach services, how new technologies and advancements in library services might also change those services to help us continue, continue to have an eye towards the future um, through their deep subject matter expertise. We hope that they might advise us uh, on uh, where we might better invest future financial resources and that all of the work of those subcommittees would then filter up to a network advisory council that would really help to look to um, the planning, and the evaluation of a core set of services, and that those recommendations really then shape uh, the recommendations that go to the State Library Commission. Ultimately, um, they advise us on how we're investing our Library Services Technology Act funds, for example, where we're asking for funding through the legislature or perhaps seeking other outside sources of funding through grants or the Trust for Montana Libraries and so forth. That's a, a lot of information, um, just sort of a, a brain dump of ideas that we've been talking about here. We have a lot more thinking to do. Um, I think we're, we're, we're at the point now where we're um, wanting to put some maybe more concrete definitions down about what the, the Montana Library Network is, what it might be, what those core services are, who can best advise us on uh, what those core services should be, how we evaluate them going forward. Um, we're, we're a little bit hesitant to put too much on paper right now because uh, we think it's really important for us to listen to the library community as we think through what these opportunities might be. Uh, we don't really have a, a timeline to roll anything out at this point, except that we know we want to have a conversation with the commission at their December 9th commission meeting. Um, as I said, I don't think we're talking about anything really revolutionary, and we certainly don't have more money to do anything new or revolutionary. Um, 
what I hope might initially come from this is um, just really a way of thinking that we create more of a, a systemic form of thinking about how we approach our library development services and that that system is really based in principles of understanding our users needs, understanding the expertise of the librarians within our library community and really thinking about how things like a shared catalog and e-resources and um, cooperative acquisition, perhaps cooperative collection development or cataloging or shared e-resources, how all of those services really influence how we're ultimately meeting our users' needs in a much more thoughtful, deliberate, and, and sort of systemic approach. So I, I know that was a lot. Um, and we wrestled with these topics for the better part of six or so hours in the Network Advisory Council yesterday. Um, and I really didn't hit on anything concrete, but I wanted to have a chance to just make sure that we're sharing with the library community uh, what these initial thoughts might be, where we think they might go in the future. So I'm gonna stop there. Got a number of staff online. I certainly welcome um, their input as well as any questions from the group. I know this is a, it's tricky when you want to have something that you can sort of touch and, and feel and turn over and mull around and, and we're not really at that point yet. But I hope that we will be soon. It was a lot of good discussion yesterday. This is Joe speaking and I would really encourage people to um, kind of tune into this conversation any way you can today. It's a good start and um, up the upcoming commission meeting would be worth tuning into as well, I think. Jenny, um, is there is there going to be a report or next steps? People can kind of something tangible they could glom onto to learn more. Yes. Yeah, so, staff that attended the Network Advisory Council are planning a debrief with Bruce Newell, the chair of the commission, and and he also sits on the Network Advisory Council. We'll be having that debrief next week. And what I hope to have available for the mission meeting is a draft definition of what the Network Advisory Council um, might look like, a, a draft definition of what the Montana Library Network is, maybe a little bit about what it isn't, um, some ideas about what these core services might be, the role of the State Library, the role of the Network Advisory Council, the role of these kinds of groups of subject matter experts, um, what their real work might look like to help support a Montana Library Network. Um, and then I think the, the work of the commission is to help think about what kind of governing model they might uh, want to see in place to help advise them on the concepts of the Montana Library Network and the services that we're talking about. Um, think about potential opportunities for more funding for more services in the future. Uh, kind of lay out the definitions, the roles, um, a near-term timeline, and some long-term goals. And to have something like that on paper for the December 9th commission meeting. And I know that will give people a, a something more to react to. Tony, this is Jen Burnell, and I think one of the things that came out of yesterday's discussion that was 
interesting to me was the fact that if we did have sub, these committees set up that would report to the NAC, that the load of responsibility might be shared a little and distributed a little bit more evenly, and that we can get more people involved and more voices heard from the library community, which I think is an exciting opportunity. Thanks, Jen. Yeah, I, I, that was a, a point that really hit home yesterday in our discussions. Any questions about anything else going on at the State Library? As many of you as possible can tune into the fall workshops next week. They're going to be uh, real robust learning opportunities. We look forward to those. As I said, I hope you're all taking care of your, yourselves and your staff. I'm looking forward to the holiday season. And with that, Jenny, are we winding up? I think so. I think okay. I stop the recording. I will go ahead and stop our recording. If you are watching our recording, um, just uh, pay it, do plan to attend the commission meeting in December, and we'll be looking forward to hearing from you. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and hit that pause button.